Don't know what you said about this. Skip. You're saying skip this? No, no. Oh, but basically, first off, do you like the G League Ignites rebrand? Nobody's really talked about this. They kind of look like the Sacramento Kings G League team. G League Ignites just a retarded. That's like two times in two minutes I've used that word, so let's not say that. But yeah, I try not to say the R word because I know some people are offended by it. Well, they shouldn't watch this show. Oh, they should not watch this show. They're <laughs> going to be offended. They're going to be offended. I think retards so... are the least of their... The word retards <laughs> the least of things that are going to offend people but on, with this program. But besides that, first off, I want to say the hot take right here would be like, I'd rather have Scoot Henderson over Victor Wembyama. Which is like 100% wrong, but... Victor Wembyama, the person that people are listing at seven four with an eight foot wingspan, who's like, all right. First off, why are people acting like Victor Wembyama dropping back to back thirty games on the G League Ignite is like impressive? He's basically playing a low level D one college team. The thing is, though, the way they run their squad is he's like, I believe he's a seventeen point per game scorer. So they don't usually you know it, it's just like every league outside of the nba is more team oriented no no 100 percent, no i know that yeah so i think th- i think this is i think these stats will start to die down once they get into the regular season and stop but, playing shit teams like the G yeah League i mean well he dropped the same he dropped 36 10 4 i know last but time. he's playing a bunch of 17 16 18 year olds i know but so is he way- I know, but he's way more developed. In the, and if they're not 17, 16, 18 year olds, they're 35 and above guys who barely made it to the NBA. Okay. And nothing else. They're all phenomenal, way better basketball players than I am. They're not talking any shit. I yeah. just want to put into perspective that the competition he is playing right now is worse than any competition overseas, worse than any competition. Yeah, like the G I mean- League. Like there are, the KU basketball team is probably better than the G League Ignite team right now. Probably. But I, I think another part is that people don't really... You know, Vic's a guy is us NBA fans. You know, we've been talking about him for a while now. Like, this isn't really surprising to either of us. And I think, you know, just casual NBA fans see these stats and they're like, they lose their mind. They're like, whoa, Victor Wembanyama is really good. And it's like, well, actually, we've known that for a very long time. <sighs> I, I saw a fellow YouTuber, a big YouTuber, just posted a video saying, you know, Victor Wembanyama is himself. Stop comparing him to Kevin Durant. Well, the thing is, not many players get compared to Kevin Durant because Kevin Durant's a seven foot man who can dribble like a guard and he can shoot from anywhere on the court and he can do anything on the offensive end at seven feet. That is insane. And it's not like Victor seven, Wembanyama. Seven four. No, Kevin Durant. It's not like Victor Wembanyama is Kevin Durant. It's just we haven't seen somebody who can kind of contort his body at every point on offense. Like, and the only comparable player with a guy of that stature over seven feet tall who can get that low and handle that way and shoot that way is Kevin Durant. So I think Kevin Durant is a good comparison. Obviously, they're different players, but like, we're just totally. I just, you know, it, when I compare Jabari Smith Jr. to Kevin Durant, that's me being just an NBA. That's just me being a Rockets bias fan saying, you know, that would be sick. It's because it's a seven footer who can dribble like a guard and can shoot from anywhere on the court. So, you know, let me say this. So, this was a great piece that came out from Jonathan Giviani and Adrian Wojnarowski, and. This was something I found rather interesting. I meant to make a video on it. My life has been incredibly hectic the past two days and will continue to be hectic. I'm still not done. I got to go to a strip club. To, I got to hit a strip club after this. And then Why? Um, in a volunteer event, mm-hmm. um, we go to a strip club with everyone in the – all my friends. And <laughs> just <laughs> – and – the youngest of our friends, well, um, <laughs> our new young friends. <laughs> yeah, our new young friends. <laughs> we go to a strip club and they find out who their older friends are, and we buy them. <laughs> we buy have them these. Have these old, young, or have these newer friends oh. been 
acclimated to the older friends yet or is are they still in the process of seeing yeah tonight they find out okay they find out tonight <laughs> they they've been doing um they've been volunteering all week so, <laughs> just, and, and and um so we we're going to a strip club called the outhouse and it's like six miles outside of lawrence kansas in a cornfield um it's bring your own beer so we bring really? uh, yes yeah, so we bring it's bring your own beer strip club so we bring jungle juice like six gatorade coolers like you know like the ones you would have on the sideline yeah. filled with jungle juice <laughs> and all our friends we drink those and then we saw um one of our new friends volunteer to be sacrificed classic yeah nice that's nice that's you that know is, what that is cool i mean people don't know strip some strip clubs have the best lunch specials you can get a really <laughs> it's, good it's always sunny you can get a great lunch <laughs> at strip clubs you can get good ribs you can get good pulled pork sandwiches you can get like good wings good buffets i bet no nah, i wouldn't go for a buffet but i would go burgers you can get like tits beer and a burger all for under and 20 bucks shot. Blowjob might cost you fifty, yeah, but for yeah. under twenty bucks, you can get a, a, a tits, <laughs> the burger, triple B's, and we're not talking about the ball, man. Yeah, burger, beers, and boobs, <laughs> all for under twenty bucks. Okay, uh, welcome I, to the world, <laughs> Forest baby. Y'all, y'all do it just fine. <laughs> but yeah, what are you talking about? That that is fucking America right there. If I didn't know, but you know, hopefully they got rid of the C section of the strip club. Mm. Let me tell you, these strippers aren't like. The ones you'd see in Las Vegas or Atlanta. <laughs> these are these are good old Kansas strippers. They're in the minors still. Yeah, they're the no, they're they're in the amateur. They're in pro am, bro. They're in semi pro. <laughs> well, um, let me go. So what were we talking? About? So Scoot Henderson. I mean, both so, of these guys are going to be able to buy as many lap chances as they want in a year. But after the performance of Victor <laughs> Wembanyama and Scoot Henderson just in the G League and Night Metropolitan 92 game. Literally solidified the hype for the two of them. But Victor Wembanyama, people were acting like he's the greatest player since LeBron James. I said, quiet down. This is the biggest hype since probably Zion Williams said, like or Anthony Davis. Like, you can't compare anyone to LeBron James. LeBron James at like 15, 16 was chosen one. The man has a yeah. chosen one tattoo across yeah. his back. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> we're comparing Victor, Wem Victor Wembanyama's hype to Zion Williamson. Anthony Davis. Hey, and I think that's being generous because he plays overseas. And when Zion was maybe going... Luca, maybe Luca Doncic, maybe yeah, yes, and people Luka. still didn't watch Luca. That's what I'm saying is like Anthony Davis had a lot of eyeballs on him. Zion had a ton of eyeballs on him every time he stepped out onto that court. But that's college basketball. It's televised. Yeah. So so you know, most hype guys since Luca slash Zion slash, you know, Anthony Davis. That's what I'm saying. Stop the LeBron hype. But so a lot of teams are preparing for his draft this year. I've joked that the Spurs are going to win this draft. So their third time ever having the first pick of the draft will be Victor Wembanyama, which would be ironic as hell. And Greg Popovich would coach till he's 100 then. And then the thing is, is that supposedly many teams are preparing to join the pursuit of landing the number one overall pick. One GM told ESPN on Wednesday, Victor decided Distorts basketball reality. The tank slash trade market will really shift after showing. It feels like last night we'll start a race to the bottom like we've never seen. End quote. As a GM on a on a team with a chance to contend for the 2023 number one overall pick, this guy told the ESPN on the morning, "Quote: He's a seven foot four Kevin Durant who blocks shots, and he's not even close to what he's going to be. He will be the most hyped player since LeBron." End quote. Fuck that. And now. Next thing that they're saying is front offices have a better chance to sell a tanking strategy to both owners and fans after seeing Victor Wembanyama play against the G League at night. Multiple top yeah. executives have said their ownership groups have expressed a better understanding of the transformational value of drafting Victor Wembanyama. Plus, the presence of Scoot Henderson as a consolation prize at number two is incredibly appealing. The possibility of landing either Wembanyama or Henderson is 27% for the teams with the three worst records. So basically, like Victor Wembanyama will be the first over, first overall pick in basically any draft, not including LeBron in the last twenty years. But Scoot Anderson in the last ten years will probably be a top two pick, and regardless of the drafts, you would have dropped him in. So you got two fucking dogs right here, and it's crazy that you're thinking that Victor Wembanyama is like 
potentially the future, you know, alien unicorn build seven footer who can play like a shooting guard. But Scoot Anderson is the mold that's still like you're looking at two guys right here, the left who could potentially be the future of the NBA and the right what we know works. OK, you got the unicorn on the left, but then you got on the right ultra athletic six foot three, six foot two combo guard who handles the ball, who can also play like a point guard, but at the same time can literally put up points like a top player in the league from day one. You know, so you got. It's crazy. And uh, Thomas Perry, Victor is not just playing the G League. He's playing for Metropolitan Metropolitan 92. It's a French club. And I believe, I forgot which city, but he played last year for ASEVL, which was the club owned by Tony Parker, but they were using him as a rotational player. Yeah. And they were one, because they were like, they're the top team in France. So he said, fuck playing for you guys for another season. I need to focus on being the draft. So he went to, I believe from what I've read, Metro is like one of the worst French teams in the league. And they they basically run everything through him. So he's going to yeah. be playing all the French teams and EuroLeague basketball, but on like one of the worst basketball teams in France. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But I just think I love Victor. Love him. But I think Scoot Henderson is – I like how this is like – you got – shout out to all 10 people watching. But, but like Scoot with this, you look at Scoot and you're like – not bad like at the yeah. the thing is that scoot at the very least is what colin sexton is at the very least colin sexton you know jordan clarkson scoots a six man of the year candidate and if it, he works it all out scoot henderson could be like bradley beal mixed with donovan mitchell offensively scoot could possibly have a better career than vic just because of longevity i know a lot of people I are agree. worried about that I would be if I if I'm a tanking team and I got the second pick, I'd be plenty pleased. I'd be plenty pleased. Jalen Johnson, we were just saying that I just said that like a few minutes ago. Victor's just a Victor would be the number one pick probably in any draft in the last 20 years, except for LeBron James's class in 03. And Scoot Henderson in the last 10 years, he'd probably be one or two in any other yeah. draft. So it's, it's crazy like, to see. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I find it funny, uh, like Luca didn't even even have he didn't even have this type of hype. He, he was drafted three, bro. Yeah, and he was traded for the eighth <laughs> overall pick, which was Trey Young. <laughs> like Marvin Bagley was picked before Luca Doncic. <laughs> yeah, they're eight because people Luka thought he was too slow, songs, bro. <laughs> people thought he was too slow. Okay, so I want to say, so I want to talk about something real quick. I know this is. Might be a little ostentatious, but this is football preview. Oh my god, that's gonna be insane! But no, I wanted to talk about some guys who NBA like a little bit of NBA preseason hype, and I say this because I'll pull it up right now. We'll switch to it. <laughs> 